And look who's back. It's almost like a sickness, isn't it? Your friends and family urge you to stay away, but here you are. It's okay. I'm glad to have you. Welcome back. This week's video is going to be a fun one. We're going to talk about valve grinding. And now before you protest, just hold on a minute. And we're not going to be doing any of this valve lapping, how to avoid the machine shop nonsense, because you can't avoid us. We're here. We're not going away. And believe me when I tell you, we're not the enemy. So let's get to it. I've got a whole gang of valves sitting here. They're a little bit special. These happen to be out of a pair of Craftsman Truck Series engines. This particular set of engines was LS based. These valves are clean. Believe it or not, these are very much used. I ran these in a tumbler for some amount of time. The intakes are titanium. They'll run in the tumbler for about three or four hours. The exhausts are just a plain old stainless. These are a little more resilient. The chrome plating on the stems, pretty tough. The ceramic just puts a little tumbled finish on the stem. That gets polished out after it's done. Uh, those valves will go into the tumbler and live there for about 12 or 13 hours. Titanium is a little more fragile. You've got to treat it with some amount of care, like a loving woman. I got lucky. The heads of the valves are coated with a CRN coating. That's a type of PVD coating. Uh, you engine nerds in the comments, quiet. If I got that wrong, just keep to yourself. Uh, the CRN coating is really tough. Uh, if you leave these in the tumbler for too long, I suppose you can hurt it. You'll see the edges start to soften up on the titanium on the titanium valves, and you can erode the coating if you leave them in the tumbler for too long, but generally about three or four hours, plenty of time. The stems get polished with a worn out emery cloth, and then the head of the valve will get pinched with some Scotch-Brite. That'll just make everything look pretty. It's really just a cosmetic thing. Looks very neat. Makes it look like you might even care. Okay, let's get this thing out of here. I want to show you what that looks like. So, here's a polished valve, here's just a tumbled valve. Might be a little hard to tell here, but a polished valve is a hell of a lot smoother. Let's see. Focus. Hopefully you can see that. Here's the head of the valve. This one looks just a bit nicer, doesn't it? So, all you do, chalk it up in your drill, turn it fast. We don't want to leave a cross hatch on this. We just want to leave a nice, smooth finish. And the worn out emery cloth is, a, uh, is an important factor here. I'm sure you could use a fine brand new emery cloth or a nice fine piece of sandpaper, but I think that would be a touch too aggressive. This is only 320 grit, or actually it just says 240. So this is only 240 grit, but it's all clogged up. The uh, abrasive's very worn out, so that tends to be the best for polishing. Okay, see some lines here, that's just dirt, not a big deal. Then pinch the head with some Scotch-Brite. That's it. Always take the time to prep your parts. Just throw in some used valves in the grinder that you glass beaded and wash real fast. Doesn't exactly scream attention to detail. Same thing for the titanium intake valve. Chuck it up in the drill. I like to go just below the keeper grooves. You want any area that's going to be supported by the guide or the valve stem seal to get polished. Oops, that's backwards. Don't do that. That's enough. Okay. 
Perfect. Look at that. Nice and new looking. Now these intake valves are made by a Celadyne. Very nice valves. The exhaust valves are manly valves. I know that because it said manly before I tumbled it. There was a swirl polish on the back of the valve. That's gone, not a big deal. The swirl polish doesn't actually do anything. Contrary to common belief, all the swirl polishing is for is to hide any crappy machining on the back of the valve. These days, most valves are gonna be pretty nicely machined. In the past, you'll often see that there's chatter or just some ugly lines that you'll see on the back of the valve. Uh, so literally what happens is the back of the valve gets sanded while it's spinning in the lathe, and then that puts that swirl polish on the back of the valve, and it does a good job of hiding any crappy uh, finishes left over from the machining. It's not necessary anymore, but people like to see it. They equate it with fast. Shiny means fast. So as a default, every stainless valve that you find is probably going to have a swirl finish on it. Let's get those two valves wiped off. A little bit of alcohol, soap and water, doesn't matter. Perfect. So a friend of mine asked me to work on these tie valves. I'm a bit of a stickler, so why not? So my process for titanium is not unlike others. Uh, when they come in, get them clean. Then you can inspect every single valve, figure out how much valve face runout they have, and do a nice little visual inspection, see if they have any defects in the faces. Originally, I condemned about half of these valves, said they were good for service if they were reground, and then the other half visually looked good, and then I went and uh, measured the valve face runout, and the valve face runout varied anywhere from half a thousandth of runout all the way up to one and a half, two thousandths. So that other set of intake valves also got condemned, and here we are regrinding them. Obviously, these have a CRN coating. Uh, what the CRN coating is, is just a very hard coating that keeps it from eating away at the titanium that's under the coating itself. Um, and that means that these valves will survive some real amount of time. Um, otherwise, titanium's a little problematic. The valve faces wear out. Uh, Honda dirt bike guys, you know exactly what I mean. Um, the valves are still good. They just need to be reground, sent off to be recoded, and then they're good to go back into service. The exhaust valves are pretty typical. There were no obvious bends. Didn't find any with any crazy amount of run out. These are good to regrind. We don't have to do anything special here. We're mainly gonna be talking about the titanium. Now it just so happens that titanium is one of those things that just is a mystery and is so elusive to the typical machine shop. You know, it's very unusual to have something like this roll into the shop. Um, there are specialty guys that deal with nothing but titanium, high performance race stuff. To them, not going to be a big deal. But to your average shop monkey, ugh, titanium. Oh no, we don't, we can't do anything with that. Or you'll have the flip side of such a wonderful person and you'll get someone who shouldn't be working on this stuff, that is. Now... Here is one of those acelidine valves. Let's see. Oh yeah, nice and focused. This one hasn't been reground. You can see it looks really slick and smooth on that valve face. A lot of that is because of the CRN coating. One of the first things you want to do is get the valve cleaned up and just get a good look at the valve face. Look for any blemishes. Another thing you want to look for is if you see the texture or the color of the valve face change, uh, titanium will be this light gray color. Um, and then the CRN, in my opinion, is like this dark blue cobalt type of color. Uh, if you see that cobalt color go away, uh, you're going to start scrutinizing the valve and wondering if that coating is worn away or if it's missing. Uh, sometimes you'll even see that the coating's chipped away. If you see any flaws in the coating, uh, you're either going to have to start thinking about replacing the valves or you'll have to regrind them and send them out to be coated. 
Here is a much older set of intake valves. Uh, these are titanium but uncoated. A lot of times you'll see the CRN coating on the valve stems. These just have a DFL type coating, which is just a, a topical molly type coating. And that, that's what we used to use for lubricity. Titanium tends to like to make babies with the parts it's rubbing up against. You know, not unlike me, but the CRN coating started to become a really popular option as the 2000s came near. Now this was reground. You can, you can see there's quite a difference in color on the bare titanium compared to the coated titanium. You'll notice that this is just a touch bluer. It's subtle, but it's there. But that's enough for this guy. Uh, it's best you keep them separated from the colored valves. And just for a good example, this is a factory LS7 valve. Um, it's a valve that I cleaned up and condemned, and this is why. Right here. Looks like it closed on a little piece of something, left a little ding in the valve. I knew that it was probably too deep to grind away, um, so I did just a light cleanup pass on the valve face, and sure enough, too much damage. This valve got junked. But because of that, you can see the difference between the color again from a CRN coated valve to a bare titanium valve. Got to pay attention to that. This is one of the valves that had a pretty immaculate valve face, a couple little very, very small dings I can let go, but any real big ones, which there are some, that's no good. We're not going to put that back into service. Now, the last thing you need to be looking at is the tip of the valve. GM engines with tie valves, the LS9, LT4, uh, LS7, these are going to be just a straight up tie valve and they'll use a lash cap on the valve tip. That's what you got here. Get a good look at the valve tips. Uh, most shops can't grind valve tips on tie, they'll burn the valve. Uh, titanium is notoriously difficult to grind. So that's why most shops uh, will turn you away if you've got this stuff. Now, when you get into the nice aftermarket valves, a lot of times they'll have a hard tip pressed on. Sometimes when you send these out to be coated, they'll ask you to pull the hard tips off and you'll just have to replace them. Now you've got to have some special grinding oil in your valve grinder, and then you should have a, a high precision chuck or a centerless grinder of some sort. If you decide to do this in your worn out quick way or your worn out sue, all you're deciding to do is waste everybody's time and probably waste everybody's money as well. Now, I happen to have a very old quick way. Uh, normally that would be a very irrelevant valve grinder, but I've done a bunch of upgrades to mine. And it's got a nice collet chuck. Uh, the oiling system on it's been upgraded. It's got all new bearings. I scraped all the ways. Very tight, very nice machine. And I can produce some pretty high quality valve grinds right here in my own home. So now we're at my valve grinder. It's an oldie but a goodie. Highly modified, it does a pretty damn good job. Now, if you're going around shopping for a new machine shop, this is probably where I'd start. Uh, most machine shops, for some reason, always seem to neglect this one machine. And I've heard the excuses. Probably one of the most wild ones is that the uh, machine shop's so busy that they don't have time to clean up or clean up their machines. And, you know, that's kind of a pet peeve. Don't do that. Machines need to be kept in good shape. Otherwise, they're going to get worn out and you're going to produce crap. No way around it. And, you know, take pride in yourself. It's probably a nice virtue is to find a machine shop that takes good care of their equipment and prides themselves on how they're presented. Start with the valve grinder. I've got this nice and new call it chuck. It's kept very dry and kept very clean. Old quick ways are always going to have a ball chuck. They're going to be, uh, these days, probably very worn out. The ball bearings wear grooves into the taper that lives on the inside of the chuck. Eventually they'll stop grabbing properly and you'll be spinning a valve in an eccentric circle. You're going to grind that same eccentric into the valve face. No bueno. Old suit machines are a little strange also. Um, suit machines have a cone on the back of the chuck and then ball bearings in the front. So the valve face is actually... Uh, dependent on how accurate the chamfer is ground on the top of the valve, less so on the valve tip. 
a centerless grinder is going to be highly dependent on how worn out or how round the valve stem is. Um, on a centerless grinder, if you have a valve stem that's not perfectly round, you'll grind that exact same shape into the face of the valve and again, not going to be accurate. All in all, know what your machine's capable of. Don't do a bad job. Moral of the story is, don't suck. And valve stems are eight millimeters, so we're gonna pull out the eight millimeter collet. ER32 installs on the nut. There we go, nope. Come on, find the hole. You've done this before. There you go. Shouldn't fall out. There's just a taper here that acts on the front of the collet and it pushes it, in, it into the taper here. I always wipe a clean finger on the inside of the hole and make sure there's nothing dirty on the inside of it. Um, I also, off camera, blow out the collet and make sure it's free of dirt and oil. Oil on a collet setup is the enemy because it will attract dirt. Dirt causes things to be inaccurate. Inaccurate valves are a problem. This isn't rocket science. Again, don't suck. Then once everything's done, You've got to dress the stone. Titanium uses a very special stone. This is silicon carbide. That's always going to be indicated by the green color. Um, I was able to grind titanium before, except I was using a ruby stone. So that wasn't the correct stone for titanium. Uh, what would happen is it would clog up the stone and I'd have to dress the stone for every single valve I grind. Uh, left a fine finish. Wasn't exactly a problem in small batches. Um, but this weekend finally got the uh, green stone installed. It's a little bit larger than this machine is uh, originally set up for, so I had to modify the cover. Um, we'll figure out some prettier hardware, but it came out pretty nice. Here's that thing that most machine shops don't do. When you dress your stone, cover up your work area, and now you've got this oil going everywhere to keep everything nice and clean, but cover it up. It's one extra step. It makes a huge difference in the cleanliness, and I'm sure over time you're gonna see less wear if you keep things clean. Go figure. Now you have to make sure there's always oil on your diamond dresser. If there isn't, it's gonna overheat and you'll actually uh, wear out the diamond. So the machine's on. I'm gonna make just one light pass here. Okay. Now we're lightly dressing stone. Sometimes it even makes sparks, but I'm just making a very light pass. Now I've got a very fresh grinding surface. There are some guys who will then take a piece of emery cloth or Scotch-Brite and just touch it to the stone while it's running. Um, I'm not going to do that. But that's to give it a little bit softer of a grinding action. Now I ground some valves yesterday. I was very happy with the finish. I don't need to modify this beyond uh, just putting a light dress on the stone. Let's get a valve installed. There we go. Now I need to get my offsets taken care of. I want this chuck as close to the stone as I can get, so I'll run it all the way this way until it stops. And then do a dry run, and there's a little bit of an air gap here. There's a stopper that's spring-loaded on the back of this chuck, so I can just move it in. Gone too far. Push it forward slightly. That looks good. I've got about 80 thousandths of clearance between the stone and the valve. And we're gonna wait for the 
oil to come out. This is a special grinding oil uh, with a bunch of titanium additive in it. And what the additive does is it helps uh, keep the stone clean. Look at that. That looks damn good. Okay, let's wipe that off. We'll get that set aside. Now let's grind another. To take it out, just loosen the nut and pull the valve out. What do you think? Does it look like I've done this before? I've seen this comment more than once. I promise you, while I may be arrogant, I'm not always wrong. Look at that. A lot of guys are scared of the collet chuck. They say it takes too long. They think that you've got to fumble around with these wrenches and, you know, it's just too much screwing around. They need to grind their valves in 15 minutes. Well, <laughs> that's why this stuff exists. And really, it's not that much work. Instead of pressing a button to take the valve out of the chuck, you just grab the nut, loosen it, and put a new one in. It's not that bad. And I don't really express much desire uh, to blast through a bunch of valves and pushing some stuff out the door. I want to take my time. Treat it with, you know, love. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, there comes that big old flood of grinding oil. Love seeing that. Now I crashed in that valve just a touch. Look at that. That is a good amount of run out. That was probably about 3,000 to run out. So that valve got pinched on something or it got dropped. A lot of times guys will think that they just have a bunch of worn out or crappy valves because their grinder always grinds a valve like that. It'll go clunk, 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 clunk. Often enough, it's just the valve grinder they're using as a piece of crap. There we go. It's another valve. Let's get that wiped off. See on the back side, the back cut is running out, uh, but the margin isn't really. Uh, it's wiggling a little bit, but not as much as the back cut is. So that's usually going to indicate that it was grounded properly. Uh, on a used valve, a lot of times you're going to see that the margin is going to move around, especially if it was ground with a bunch of run out. Um, other times, it could just be a problem with the valve blank, which is the valve material itself. Uh, the manufacturing tends to not be the most accurate on some valves. That's another valve reground. Let's move on to the next one. It's not a race. Take your time. About every four valves, I'll dress the stone. Um, I'm not running in, into any issues with the stone yet. It visually looks very clean, um, and it's not abnormally loud. Um, I'm not going to let it get to the point where it's making too much noise. There's some guys who will just blast through a whole set of valves, never dress the stone, and it shows. You know, a, a worn-out stone is going to leave a rough valve face, or it's going to have... Valve face run out. It's a thing.
All right. Last time. This one's not nearly as bad. Let's just stop there. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, very, very, very subtle. Let's see if I can show you that on camera. So it's cleaned up about half of the face at this point. All right, you watching here? Pay attention. Now this is bare titanium. I'll let you know when we get to old valve. It's coming up right now. You'll see a slight difference in color. See we've got shiny, it's a little bit darker of a color. That is your worn out valve face. And now we're back on, on bare titanium. So from here to here. That part of the valve is not cleaned up. Just interesting. And you can see it when it's spinning. It's really quite obvious. Look at that. Nice and wet. A little bit of moisture never hurt anyone. Yeah. I'll probably dress the valve now. Or dress the stone now. I'm actually not liking some of the noises I'm hearing. Let's let this spark out. Now you hear that high-pitched sound, not just my voice, starting to go away. I'm just slowly working it across the stone. Once it gets quiet, probably this pass, yep. I can move the chuck away, and we're good to go. Beautiful. Look at that. Well, that's pretty. So I've shown this many times in other videos. It's really good to QC all of your equipment. You've got to do it on a constant basis. Uh, on a valve grinder, easiest thing you can do is put a dial indicator or a test indicator on the valve stem uh, while it's installed in the valve grinder. Um, then you know that whatever runout number you see on the valve stem, that's probably going to translate to what your minimum runout number will be on your valve face. So this is what that's going to look like. I've got a half thou indicator set up in here. A uh, tenths indicator would be a lot more accurate, but this is plenty for what we're doing here. So I've got the indicator on the valve stem. Let's see. Give that a little rotation. It's not moving at all. There are some guys who like to take the freshly ground titanium valves, put them up in a drill, and polish it with a piece of white scotch bright. So let's try that. Let's see what that looks like. So here we go. Cut off a very small piece of white scotch bright. We're just gonna pinch the valve face. There you go, that's it. Now is this gonna make a big difference? Let's see. Wipe off the polished valve. Wipe off one that was just ground. Bam. I don't know. That looks pretty good. I like the way that polished valve looks. There's nothing wrong with the valve that's only been ground, but that Scotch Bright just little uh, little bit of icing on top of the cake. Why don't you tell me? Valve on the left was just ground. Valve on the right was polished with the scotch brite. Honestly, neither one is bad at all. Well, this was drama free. Lucky me. I think it's got more to do with the lack of experience. Nothing special here. It's just a different process. Titanium is one of those things. 
think another thing you got to keep in mind is that it also indicates high risk. Now you can't lap titanium valves. The abrasive gets embedded into the t into the titanium, and it's actually uh, it's actually quite a problem because the dirt and abrasive is titanium's worst enemy. If you're into dirt bikes, you'd know this. Uh, you'd know this is the case with the four-stroke Honda motors. Uh, those use titanium intake valves. Uh, CRF 450 kind of comes to mind. Those guys are the prime example as to why titanium doesn't exactly belong in everything. Uh, you know, keeping things clean and having making sure you have nice filtration and everything's. Uh, you know, you're, you're doing your best to keep crap from going inside of your engine is good and all, but, you know, titanium doesn't like dirt, period. The guys that are out there lapping their valves, probably opening yourself up for some uh, more risk than you probably should be. Uh, you can technically get away with it, and people do every day. But you got to be using some something really, really fine. You know, I even know of some people who will put a lap line onto titanium or just on a valve in general using just toothpaste, and that works just fine. I personally think a little bit of ink is uh, all you need to get an idea of what your valve job looks like. Well, the camera died, so I went to... And I took the liberty of just grinding some of these exhaust valves. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What's this weird lump on my balls? We have four valves left to go. Oh, three valves. The turns have tabled. Let's see. This tripod is absolutely in my way. I've been inside shops that don't understand that this, this kind of stuff matters. The attention to detail is not a big deal. Uh, or that they'll consider it overkill, in fact. You know, that kind of mentality, you know, the good enough type of mentality, or it's just an engine, or this or that, it tends to backfire. That's a pretty common thing. This guy's got a good, good amount of run out. You can actually see how far off this valve was. It's only hit, the grinder was only hitting right there. And then it just fades away. I'd be curious to know what this says for face run out. I'm sure we'll still get a real number even though I've ground half the valve. Because it wasn't even close to cleaning up. Let's try this out. All right. So we're a touch late here, but we still got a foul run out. And I've ground half the valve, so it's safe to say this was two thousandths or more worth of run out. This is why you check everything. Oh. 
Wow. Okay, so that's cleaned up. I'm just going to let it spark out. You try your best to use the entire stone. And let's go quite slowly when I'm sweeping it back and forth across the face. This should be it if I go back the other direction. That's it. And now to the point of the rough valve faces, you know, those old NASCAR valves I have sitting around. They were reground and waiting to go back into service after coating, but they ended up just living in my toolbox. Somebody ground these. It's kind of scary looking. Check this out. Get a good look at that. It's not the roughest thing in the world, I guess, but you can still feel it. Looks accurate. Angles aren't moving around. But that's what we're going for. As mirror like as possible. Why don't you tell me what you'd rather have? Freaking slick. That's everything. It all looks quite good. It's a little nerdy. I'm going to get these things packed up. Get them sent back to Texas. I know this was a touch technical for my channel, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed sharing a subject that I'm a little passionate about with you, so it's all good. A short video every once in a while is probably not the worst thing. What should I work on next? I've got piles of stuff. Why don't you let me know in the comments? So, thanks for watching. This is Josh at Engine Rehab. Make sure you hit that bell up top, and if you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. I'll see you next time.